Hello, my name is Allison Marino Swars. I'm an analyst on the leave of absence team here in Health Human Resources. My team and I process and advise on when an employee needs time away from work for a number of different reasons. Over the next few minutes, I will be giving you an overview of various types of leave of absences that an employee may be eligible to take at UC San Diego Health. I'll also be giving you information on what to do when you become aware of an employee's need for a leave and who to call when you have questions. This training will discuss leaves that fall under a family and medical leave, abbreviated as FML. There are three main leave laws that are included in FML. First is FMLA, or the Family and Medical Leave Act, which is a federal leave law that protects an employee when they have the need to take time off of work due to a qualified family or medical reason. Next is CFRA, or the California Family Rights Act, which is a state law that is similar in many ways to the federal FMLA law and often runs concurrently with FMLA. Finally, there's PDL, or Pregnancy Disability Leave, which protects an employee who is pregnant or disabled by pregnancy. Here at UC, we use the term FML to incorporate all three of these protected leave types. So, if your employee is out under one or more of these protected leaves, you'll receive a notice from Health Human Resources of your employee's FML eligibility or approval. In order for an employee to be eligible for a leave of absence under FMLA or CFRA, they must meet the following eligibility requirements. First, they must have worked for UC for at least 12 cumulative months. Note that this does not have to be consecutive time and previous employment at another UC location would count towards the 12 months of employment as well. Second, they must have worked at least 1,250 hours in the immediately preceding 12 months from the start date of their requested leave. If both of these criteria are met, then an employee would be eligible. For PDL, an employee need only be pregnant and they would qualify for pregnancy disability leave. Although there is a specific eligibility requirement for FML, please be aware that there may be additional leave types available to employees, such as a non-FML qualifying medical leave. Therefore, it is important that once you become aware of a need for leave that might fall under any type of medical or family-based leave, you should reach out to the leaves unit here in Health HR to make sure the employee is given all available information. We are legally required to provide FML and leave information to employees in a timely manner, which typically means within five days, which I will discuss further in a few minutes. Now that we know what FML is and how an employee can qualify, let's discuss what they get with those leave protections. Under FMLA and CFRA, an employee is entitled to up to 12 work weeks of unpaid leave in a calendar year. The 12 weeks can be taken all at once, incrementally, meaning in chunks of time, such as an eight week leave of absence, or intermittently, meaning as needed or here and there, for example, a few hours or days at a time. Under PDL, a pregnant employee can be out for up to four months as dictated by medical necessity. In addition to leaves that qualify under FML, an employee may also be entitled to leave under UC policy and or a collective bargaining agreement through their union. I mentioned previously that FML protects an employee when they need to take time off due to a qualified family or medical reason. But what does that mean? And what family members qualify under FML? Well, an employee can take time away from work for one or more of the following reasons. For the birth and to care for a newborn child, to care for a newly placed child through adoption or foster care, to care for an immediate family member with a serious health condition, and family member here refers to a spouse or domestic partner, a child, or a parent. In-laws are not covered by FML. To care for themselves due to their own serious health condition, otherwise known as a medical or disability leave, and finally, for military leave, military exigency leave, or military caregiver leave. Now that you're familiar with the qualifying leave types and covered family members under FML, let's discuss the responsibilities of each person involved. I'll start first with the employee. An employee is responsible for providing complete and sufficient information of the need for leave, including the anticipated dates, frequency, and duration of the need. Once approved, if the employee is out on an intermittent leave, remember this refers to someone who is out as needed, they would be responsible for following your department's standard call-out procedure, barring emergencies, and specify that they are using FML for the absences each time they are out. 
Finally, if an employee is already on a medical leave of absence for themselves or a family member and needs to extend their time, they must provide medical certification to Health Human Resources of their continued need for leave. So what is your responsibility as a supervisor or manager? The first important step is to identify that a need for leave exists. That might be when an employee informs you about a need for leave that may fall under FML. It also might be that you become aware of a situation that would likely fall under a need for leave for a medical or family reason. Take for instance, an employee that has called out sick for the same reason consistently or for a prolonged period of time. That may be your trigger to inform the employee that they may fall under a protected leave type and to reach out to Health HR for information regarding FML. If they have informed you of the need directly, you are required to inform Health HR as soon as possible. You also must provide Health HR with any medical documentation you received from the employee as soon as possible. There is a statutory obligation to provide an FML determination to employees within five business days, and that timer starts with you. Remember, it's very important to be supportive. However, do not ask any health or diagnosis related questions. As the employer, we are not entitled to any personal health information. And finally, what is the role of Health HR and how can we help you? Once HHR becomes aware of the need for leave, we will collect all of the required documentation, determine the employee's eligibility for any protected leave time, provide the required FML notification to both you and the employee, informing them of their eligibility and if approved, informing them of their rights and responsibilities under FML. We will also inform them of the amount of time that this leave will count against their FML entitlements, and if they're not eligible for FML, we're responsible for providing the reason for denial. Health HR can assist employees by providing information regarding leaves and the potential implications to their pay, benefits, and job protection. We try to help the employee through what can be a very complicated or confusing process so that their time off is as smooth as possible. For you, the manager or supervisor, we're here to answer your questions as well. How long will the employee be out? How do I code their time? What things can or can't I say regarding a leave? We are happy to help you with any questions you have as well. So why would an employee want to file for a leave of absence in the first place? Well, if they qualify, the time is job protected. In almost all cases, they have the right to be reinstated to their exact position and basically pick up right where they left off. Employees also cannot be terminated, disciplined, or penalized for their FML absences. This means that those absences cannot be considered when evaluating their performance. They also cannot be subjected to retaliation for taking their entitled time. There are also important benefits protections. Benefits can be quite expensive, so having that protection in place is critical during a leave. An employee may also be able to use some of their accrued vacation or leave balances under FML, subject to personnel policies or collective bargaining agreement. Okay, so we've gotten through most of the basics of FML. Now, how can you reach us? Health Human Resources has a very user-friendly website that is super easy to navigate. Just go to hhr.ucsd.edu, click on Benefits, and then Leave of Absence, and answer the questions provided to submit a leave request. Once we have the information, we can not only help the employee with their need, but we can help you with any questions you may have. If this presentation was helpful to you, but you would still like even more training on the leaves of absence, we will be offering an FML for Managers workshop that will provide more information regarding the various leave types and roles and responsibilities. And you can always reach out to the leaves team by phone by calling 619-543-3200, option number one. Thanks for taking the time to learn about FML and leaves of absence, and I hope to hear from you soon.